time on building the X set, I'm focusing on mounting the gauges and the gauge pod. Um, basically, uh, you know, the gauge pod is part of the bodywork. It's the uh, what that be third or fourth piece of bodywork for the car. Um, I guess hood, nose cone, and this are the only painted pieces. Um, you get one shot at this, so you got to do it right the first time or close enough to right that you can live with it. But uh, basically what I've done first is I've taken blue tape and masked off the entire uh, face that the gauge pod will be sitting. I'm going to be using the stock Miata cluster in for the, you know, in front of the steering wheel gauges for tachometer, speedometer, fuel. Um, you know, it has a dummy oil pressure and water temp gauge on it too, which I won't be using, but they will be hooked up. And then uh, the plan is once I have Mega Squirt installed in the turbocharger in the center console that I'm going to make, I'm going to have the uh, Mega Squirt uh, dashboard on a uh, Raspberry Pi and a, a LCD screen uh, tablet. So um, those are going to kind of read my, you know, pyrometer readings, oil pressures. Uh, uh, all that kind of stuff. So um, this is basically just going to be strictly, you know, the main gauges that I'm going to be using on the car. So I am going to use the stock Miata one for now, um, and then I'm going to be mounting it inside of this gauge pod. So I will show you guys uh, how I'm going to cut this out, uh, how it mounts, and everything like that. So let's get to it. So first off, there's this bracket from X Motive. Um, basically, it's installed like this. Uh, on top of the um, steering mounts uh, that come from Motive as well. And then basically what happens is there's a hardware kit in it with some small um, screws and or bolts and nuts to basically allow it to uh, bolt up in these factory locations. And then uh, the idea is this gauge pod will slide over the top of that uh, to cover the, you know, ugly back side of this this gauge pod. So um, I've looked into getting the speedometer back to zero. It's not as easy as you think. It's not something where you can just roll the numbers and be at zero. Uh, it will look very distorted. There's a lot of timing in there between the numbers that needs to be preserved. And it's uh, something you can't really, from what I've researched, do yourself. It's something that's gonna have to be done uh, outsourced. And in most cases, it is technically illegal to do this. I would not feel bad about doing that because I'm basically building a brand new car here um, that will have zero miles on it. So, um, you know, I wouldn't feel bad about setting them to zero if it was a possibility for me to do. But I cannot find a reasonable source uh, to get that done with or do it myself. So I'm going to leave it right now with the 230,000 miles that the stock, uh, or excuse me, the donor car had on it. Um, now, basically, I'm trying to figure out here, this is the next step, where this mounts and then where my cuts need to be because also these these tabs in here the screws and bolts go through there and bolt into the back of the gauge cluster to hold everything together so uh, they bolt at this bottom location through these holes and then also in the top location here so uh, basically taping off blue tape and I'm going to take a lot of measurements and really kind of quadruple check everything to make sure I got it as close to what I want as possible Okay, so this is the basic shape of what I'm going to go for here. Um, I'm going to kind of try to keep it inside of this line a ways, as I'd rather be short than long. Um, so I'm going to probably cut about a eighth to a quarter inch inside of this line first, and then come back and uh, check the fitment, and then go from there. Now, this cut does not need to be perfect because there is edge banding that you're going to put around to basically cover these ugly edges that they give you. Um, so everything, all the body panels you put edge, edge banding on, uh, no matter what, because, uh, I mean, look, look like crap if you didn't. So um, I'm going to cut inside this, mount it, see how it looks, and then go from there and trim out a little bit farther each time until I get the uh, kind of the, the perfect um, fitment or display of what I want and then go from there. I'd rather have to cut two, three, four, even ten times than cut once and it be too big and then you can't cover from it. And I imagine they would charge you a, uh, they already charge I think about eleven, twelve hundred dollars for the body work. I think uh, it'd be a good chunk with shipping um, for them to remake it and repaint it in your color. So I'm trying to avoid that. Okay, so I finished my, uh, my cut out and got it kind of fabbed up and mounted and that's what we're looking at there. Not too bad. Um, 
Probably could use a little more trimming in here, maybe a little more right in here, but um, I'm pretty happy with it for the time being. I also screwed in the brackets there. I went ahead and got new hardware because the ones that it came with just was season up on me and I couldn't get the bolts off and so forth. So um, basically I'm uh, at the point now I couldn't get the edge banding on here because the fiberglass is too thick in this point. I also really screwed up the gel coat in many many places. Uh, cutting it even though it was taped off and masked off it still uh, scratched very easy so I'm probably gonna end up just um, repainting this or uh, wrapping with a carbon fiber um, 3M wrap, but um, anyways, that's the the basic shape for now. And uh, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take this um, all apart. I'm going to shave down this lip here because it's too thick for the edge banding, and I'm going to um, uh, sand that down on the inside uh, so the edge banding will fit over. I'm going to also go ahead and probably cut these areas out a little more around the gauges here, get those marked out. Um, everything else looks pretty good and pretty symmetrical. Uh, the other thing I'm going to do is I am going to, the only thing holding this on, it's not tightened down, but is basically two bolts uh, here. There's nothing at the top to support this. So um, even tight, the bottom's fairly tight, but you can see in the wind that's going to rock like crazy. So I am actually going to uh, make up an angle bracket here so I can get a, a screw mounted in here and weld that in right here to this plate. I'll show that uh, in the next clip here. But um, yeah, for now I'm gonna get this all mocked up. I'm gonna take it apart and modify it a little more and get it back together. Okay, so first off here, I'll show you the bracket I made in the back here. Basically uh, just about, I think it was about two and a half piece of uh, eighth inch uh, steel strip. Uh, basically have about a, if you can see there, about a half inch bend 90 degree in it there. That comes up, and then right at this point here, it breaks again to get the angle right. And then I attached a screw in there. This is uh, much sturdier than the, uh, the stock mounting points really just consist of this and this. These two bolts up here, all that they actually do is, um, is basically hold the gauge cluster to the pod. So um, this makes it a lot sturdier. Everything's not even tight. As you can see, this, this screw's still loose. Everything's not even tightened down yet. So I'm going to be sourcing some black hardware, black oxide, or paint, paint these black, uh, the hardware, because um, it just looks kind of stupid right now. But um, yeah, for now, I just want to show you the, how these bolt up. And then I got my edge trim on here, uh, just basically temporarily, but it doesn't look too bad. I think that um, looks halfway decent. And that'll do for now until I figure out a better option and get a better uh, better way of doing it going. So uh, that wraps it up for this video. Basically, that's the installation of the Exocet gauge uh, pod or dash pod, whatever they call it. And uh, like I said, I got a lot of scratches and stuff in it. It wasn't a real success. I, I made it work. It's a pain in the butt. I'm anticipating all the body panels are going to be like this, but um, got that in and ready to go. And uh, on of new things. So thanks for watching guys. Hope this helps you out. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. If you like the videos, please like or subscribe. I appreciate it. See you next time.